Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube exclusive edition of The List, bro. I'm your loving leader, benevolent host, Midwest Monster, and the one and only Troy Adams. And with me today, joining the strike force of this podcast, he is the Rick Martell to my Tito Santana, or maybe the other way around. He is Greg. What up, Greg? What up? <laughs> and you know what? Hey, uh... You know why the other way around. <laughs> yeah, gee, I don't. Explain it to me. Uh, real quick, <laughs> now that you mentioned Tito Santana, and I know it's a really obscure thing, because um, I, I, I'm going to the Survivor Series, so I've been binge-watching um, old Survivor Series, right? Um, I'm uh -huh. up to 1989, okay? okay. And uh, so, <laughs> and I think this, I don't know if Bruce Pritchard has the saying he does as something he made up or if it's something he heard, but... I'm watching this match, right? And the first two guys in are Tito Santana and the Honky Tonk Man. Uh -huh. Okay, they're they're wrestling. They lock up, and and then Gorilla Monster is like, "Well, oh, these are two talented athletes." And then Jesse Ventura, I swear to God, says, "Oh yeah, Chico Santana, Honky Tonk Man. That's the main event anywhere in the country." <laughs> <laughs> Why does he bury the freaking thing right on the program? That's messed up. I, mean, I was like, I heard that, and I'm like, um, is this where Pritchard got this, or what? Uh, I mean, it's I, a it's a common thing in the in the business. He he is. I've however, never heard it before, Bruce. Though, really, like this, and I just caught that. Wow. Yeah. The only one that I've heard from Bruce that was like really like made me laugh was, uh, you know, that I hadn't heard before was the, uh, you know, well then the damn bell had to ring. Yeah, that one gets me every time. Gotta love it. Uh, I kind of want that shirt. That damn bell had a ring. <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of getting shirts, by the way, uh, I don't usually plug things on the YouTube channel, but I'm going to real quick. It's not going to be, you know, don't worry. You're not going to be getting a big commercial. However, if you go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash pod rest society, that's P O D W R E S society. You can get some cool swag from the uh, podcast wrestling society. And that's T-shirts, mugs, clocks, phone cases, tote bags, whatever the hell. You can get some awesome, hilarious artwork on there. Or you can just get our logo on there, which is fine, too. All right. Well, and Remember, if you buy any of that stuff, TJ is going to personally call you and thank you. Uh, I will call you something, but I will not call you on the phone. <laughs> no false advertisement here. Okay. Well, uh, you're going you're gonna to tweet. Yeah, you will. I'll 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 make sure to tweet you. Just uh just drop me your uh your uh Twitter handle there and I'll I'll, I'll uh, send you something. Anyway, you were a little confused about this list. I I gave some uh an odd explanation, I guess, last week. Let me make things a little yeah, and clear. Yeah, I still I still think that my list might not reflect what you wanted, but I did get all the repackagings I could think of. And, okay. Yeah. Well, let me put it this way. The the list this week, bros and broettes, are the top 10 worst gimmicks changed by WWE. Now, what that means, uh, like, the essence of it was uh, if a guy had a gimmick, a guy or gal, uh, had a gimmick in one organization, and then they went to WWE, and then WWE said, no, I don't want you to have that gimmick, and they repackaged them, and it's terrible. And it's something that just, it, it sucks. Uh, and I'll kind of, I can do my list first and kind of give you the uh, the gist of it. However, I am accepting just any repackagings that WWE did that yeah. just blew Good, really bad. because that's the vast bad. majority of mine. Right. It is kind of hard because there weren't a whole lot. Uh, now, I will say my top 10 were gimmicks changed by WWE when they came, when someone came over to WWE some of them, uh, the person had been there for a little while and then got repackaged. Um, but either way, this was a gimmick that had crossed over from another organization into WWE, and then they repackaged it, and it was bad. So, oh, quick spoiler for mine: Naked Mini is not on the list. So, well, because that wasn't a bad repackaging. That was a good. That's why. Yeah, that, exactly. That's that was why. a good tiny package i mean repackage i don't well, I want to see you as a hog farmer pal i want to see you naked <laughs> i don't want to see you as a hog farmer i want to see that low-key big hog 
to steal something oh. from Tony Schiavone now. Hey, we always steal from Pritchard or from Jim Cornette, so I figured I'd switch it up, steal from uh, Tony Schiavone and the What Happened When podcast. So either way. Steals, because he's a hell mother effer. Came out of a box. Series over. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Mother effer. All right. Let's get into the uh, to my list of the top 10 worst gimmicks changed by WWE. Number 10. I said Big Vito. It's repackaged as the dress guy. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> How does one forget about that? His finishing move. Well, his finishing, in my defense, I was trying to, I think. But, yeah. Uh, his finishing move was he put the guy's head up under his dress and then put him in like a seated hammer lock. It was so, like in his, his crotch, wasn't it? Or something yep. like that? Yep. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be? You're wearing oh, yeah. a dress. Why would you put your junk on a dude? What? I picture you in a dress, pal. <laughs> Vince McMahon is Freaking weird. That's all I got to say. You know this tickled him. You know it did. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> God dang it, pal. <laughs> You're in a dress. All right. Uh, number nine. We do a lot of Vince impressions on this show. Number nine. Uh, this is one. The guy had been there for a while, and then they repackaged him, kind of like Vito. However, uh, he. this is a carryover gimmick from various other places. Number nine, I said one man gang into Akeem, the African dream. Well, he was the one man gang in WWE for a minute. He became the dream. Right. The African yeah. dream. Yeah. That's why I said he'd been there for a while as the one man so, gang. I mean, I'm just saying, that. though, to be fair, they did carry one man gang over. Right. Kind of. Well, then they decided, hey, we don't need this. Well, kind of like Big Vito. He was, you know, the yeah. Italian mobster for a while. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's in a dress. So. Yeah, oddly enough, he was exposed, by the way, no pun intended, uh, from Paul Burchill, the pirate, who made the list <laughs> last week. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he did make my dishonorable mentions, but he did not make my actual top ten list, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, put, I did put Akeem lower on the list because while the gimmick itself was very racist and stupid, he had a pretty good run as Akeem. So, yeah. it, I didn't put it too high. Except for that infamous moment on Saturday Night's main event where he fell out of the ring and knocked himself out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. Well, I mean, actually, to be fair, you did say memorable, so there it is. Right. Well, uh, and, well the thing was, he, I, I don't know, how can you look at this guy? He's got a tattoo on the, tattoos on the side of his head, mohawk, gigantic. You know, he's he's over, he's a big, nasty heel, and then it's like, we're going to make you shuck and jive and, you know, talk and jive and wear a dashiki and, like, what the hell? All while being white as a ghost. I, I, <laughs> not that that's bad. Well, that's okay, saying, well, then on the flip you know, side, would it have been more racist if he was black and they were making him Yeah, it, it would have been, yeah, probably. It's bad either way. Bad all the way around. Well, okay, I think in this way it was racist, and that way it would have been stereotypical, I, I think. True, yeah. I don't, you know. Yeah. Uh, number eight. Again, it wasn't god-awful, but it wasn't good. I said, number eight, the total package Lex Luger becomes the narcissist. Yeah. One of only... Th I mean... This was his first yeah. instance of going by a nickname, by the way. Because uh, if I recall, he was not the narcissist Lex Luger. He was just the narcissist. Correct? Uh, yeah. And here's the thing. Going back, I thought like Bobby Heenan was like messing up the name. Apparently, they really just want to be called nar narcissist. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I think I heard it on someone's podcast. He goes, oh, it wasn't, a, wasn't a Bobby Heenan messing up. It wasn't supposed to be the narcissist it's supposed to be narcissist which makes I no think, sense i think they had trademarked the wrong name or something like that Good i think Lord. that's what i heard <laughs> so yeah, there you go just Good add grief. horrible to to your list right there yeah no. well did you uh did you ever hear pritchard's story about um i guess you know mr perfect loved ribbing people and you know how lex would wear the uh the tassels on his outfit 
and he was yeah, very, I heard that. Yeah, he was very OCD, yeah. and he said every match when they worked together, Perfect would pull off just one, be like, got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay, number seven in his in WWE's defense, his first gimmick wasn't great either, uh, but they changed it into something irrelevant. Number seven, I said Johnny B. Bad becomes the wild man Mark Marrow. That was wow. just... It went over like a fart in church. At least Johnny B. Bad had yeah, some charisma. And, it, and then they, when they changed that, <laughs> it sucked even more. Yeah. Oh my gosh. By the way, Conrad called him uh, the old school Brock Lesnar. He was like, think about it. He did a, almost... Like, his finisher was almost the F5. He wore fight shorts, and he was married to Rena Mero. <laughs> yeah. Like, there you go. Yeah. Think about that. And, like, you know, in their heyday, they can legitimately kick your ass. I mean, he was a gold gloves boxer. So. And both did a version of the shooting star. Boom. Yeah. Man, that's... There you go. It's crazy. Uh, and when they both pulled it out on, on live pay-per-view, they didn't win the match with that move. Right? Wow. I know. Crazy. Yeah, freaking gold dust kicked out of it. What the hell? All right, number six. You might not remember this one. I said Tommy Dreamer becomes a disgusting person. And oh God! For all of you that don't remember, he uh, was. I don't want to see him swing kendo sticks anymore. I want to see him drink the Undertaker's tobacco spit. Yeah, he drank the Undertaker's tobacco spit. He he had a bucket of vomit that he walked to the ring eating by hand, and then he threw it on the Undertaker. And got his butt kicked. Uh, there was a vignette of him putting a cup in the urinal while it was flushing and <laughs> drinking urinal water. Uh, that was the first one I thought of, actually. <laughs> yeah. He brushed his dog's teeth and then his with the same toothbrush. And it just, it went on and on and on. I was like, what the hell? Just because he's out of shape, you're like, oh, you're going to be gross, pal. That's what Could the have hell? Could booger, huh? He was. He basically was bashing Booger, but skinnier, which, you know, whatever. There's a compliment. Number five. Shane... That's what you say to someone when they feel overweight? At least you're not bashing Booger. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. Uh, number five. I said Shane Douglas becomes Dean Douglas. Yeah, man. You take was... the franchise Shane Douglas, who was, like, just amazing on the mic, good in the ring. Eh, his look was, at the time was not great. He was pretty skinny and, you know, not defined. But you make him Dean well, he didn't Douglas. Have that awesome, uh, he didn't have that awesome ponytail yet, either. Yeah, right. He he wasn't Triple H before Triple H was Triple H. Yeah. I just, uh Not saying. Hey, but but Dean, Dean was a former Intercontinental Champion for uh, two what, seconds. 15 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes, I was like, oh, it was a little while. He had four match. Yeah, and then Razor whooped his ass. Like, the whole thing was just stupid. <sighs> Number four. You're going to love this one. Terry Taylor becomes the Red Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. That one got bumped from my list, but yeah. Uh, and the sad thing is, that's what people will remember him for. From you know, and you know what I hate though it's like he was actually really good wrestler man like really really good like oh, Terry yeah. Taylor I mean yeah I was just watching something um you know watch along of Starcade eighty seven and where he took on Nikita Koloff and they were trashing on Koloff and then at the same time they were like you know it really makes you appreciate Terry Taylor when you see that he carried him to a good match so I mean. I don't know, and and from everything I've heard from his backstage personality, he deserves all the crap he gets. However, he was a damn good wrestler, man. He could, he could have been something, but I don't know. Some people say yeah, he, he could have been Mr. Perfect. <laughs> wow. Some people say that he tried too hard to be Ric Flair 2.0, but I don't know. Um, number three. Oh, Michael. oh, man. See, it's, it's so a good sign you're laughing before you do it. <laughs> Number three, uh, Michael P.S. Hayes into Doc Hendricks. Yeah, oh, man. That's, <laughs> I forgot that one. Yeah. You take the free bird, Michael Hayes, and you make a, hey, it's Doc Hendricks. Thanks for doing it. Like, what the hell? Oh, 
couple things though. Number one, they put him in like suits. You know, he was always like the rocker guy. Now they have him in suits. Yep. Uh, and then number two, they cut his hair and have him slick back what they have left. Yeah. Like, like like greased up hair. I'm like, oh my god. And shave his beard. Like when I was a kid, I didn't realize it. Looking back at it now, I'm like, wow. That was like a, a whole screw the WCCW crap. You're going to be this. <laughs> yeah. Well, from what I heard uh, from from what uh, I hate to keep referencing the same podcast, but serious, uh, Pritchard was talking about it. He said, well, I think it he, is the general favorite. Idea, yeah, but. it is. But uh, he said that, you know, he kept him and others kept pitching Hayes for years. And every single time uh, Vince had the same reaction. I don't want a free bird. And then. Finally, it's like, fine, I'll give him a shot. And he's like, but he's got to cut the hair and shave his face. And he said he showed up to the, uh, you know, to the job interview dressed like, you know, he does. And, uh, you know, had his hair halfway down his back. And he's like, hey, before you walk in, I'm warning you, he's going to cut your hair. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, all right, how much? And he's like, mm, eh, you'll see. And he said, well, he's sitting there in the barber chair. Vince kept a little more, pal, a little more, pal. And I was like, dang. And then he makes him talk like a freaking radio DJ. Like, it's like, what the hell? Not only that, he's also a salesman. He sold all their merch. Yeah, he was the original, um, uh, who am I thinking of? Don, uh, Don, Ka uh, Don, uh, West. Don West. Yeah. Why am I might blank it on his name? But yeah, Don West. <sighs> number two, this one hurt. Like, it's not my number one, but this one hurt the most out of all of them on my list because I w I'm still a huge mark for this guy, and it just hurt. Number two, I said DDP becomes the stalker, and then he becomes a motivational speaker. Uh, that's a hell of a 180. Yeah. Like, what the hell? You know, he should have used that like he was testifying in church or something. It was like, I used to be a stalker. I stalked men's wives, and now I'm... Telling you all about the power of positivity. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. <sighs> I was once cheated out of the WCW world title by David Arquetti. Now look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, we cover in the archives and the podcasts. Uh, go check it out now. Hmm. Are you ready for my number one, Greg? I think, right. I, I think I know what it is. It has to be this one because yeah. if it's not, I'm shocked you left this off the list. So yeah, go. All right. Well, here it goes. Tabasco, bro. Number well. one. Number <laughs> number one. Barry Windham becomes the stalker. <laughs> not even close to what I thought you were going to say. Okay. <laughs> well. Wow. And for all of you that don't know, I'm not talking about he becomes a stalker. His name was The Stalker. And he dressed in camo, painted his face in camo, and wore a beret. He... And this, this is why it's number one on my list. He's a former WCW and NWA US and World Champion. Main eventer. Big league. Big Huge. league. Huge in the NWA. Huge. Big league player, the best, the best people. And then he comes to WWE and they make him a stalker. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, because they dress him in camouflage and stuff too. Like literally trying to hide him. <laughs> you know, this and his uh was his his brother? Uh, it was it was his brother IRS or was that his cousin? Uh I wanna say it was his cousin. Yeah. I don't know. I th I think it was his brother. Either way. They have both of them. Like, just what? What? What did Vince have against the Wyndham family? The Wyndham <laughs> Rotunda family just gets screwed. Barry Wyndham gets them off. Yeah, Barry Wyndham is the stalker. Mike Rotunda becomes IRS. I mean, don't get me wrong, IRS got over. But like, what the actual hell? Uh, this Barry Wyndham will never get over. What the hell? <laughs> Not my guy, pal. Yeah, we didn't trademark that. We'll make him IRS 2.0. He was a little closer to Barry Wyndham when he became Blackjack Wyndham, although 
and I've used this reference already uh, so far, but I will again. That got over like a fart in church. <laughs> Him and Blackjack Bradshaw. For those of you that don't remember, uh, Barry Windham and JBL were tag team partners, and they were the new Blackjacks. Blackjack uh, Windham and Blackjack Bradshaw. Right? Or was it Bradshaw? Yeah. Okay. There you go, pal. All right. Well, I guess that means uh, now that I'm wrapped up, it is time for your <laughs> list, bro. So uh, what you got for us, Brogert? Wow. Wow. All right. <laughs> Best I could come uh, up with. My number, my number 10, I said uh, Joel Gertner. No, <laughs> I was gonna say, how the hell was he repackaged? He was always a dirty, filthy. I, I thought you're, I thought you're gonna call me Brol Gertner. Um, oh, that's what I thought you said. Uh, number ten, I said Dean Douglas. Yeah. Oh man, made uh, yeah. made both of our lists a little higher on mine, but uh, man, yeah, was, it was bad. Yeah, it was, it was something. Can you imagine uh, the ECW fans when he showed up like that? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man. I bet what the hell is this? I bet they were throwing crap. What the F? Uh, and Paul oh, Heyman man. was like, told you so. Yep. All right. Uh, next one. And I have a lot that were repackaged within WWE, by the way, just so you know. All righty. Yeah, so just yeah. The next one, uh, I said Reverend Devon. Oh, what what was so bad about Reverend Devon? Oh, not not much at all. Oh, my brother, testify. He, um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't understand. Like, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get you. Reverend Devon was a, was a masterpiece, man. <laughs> oh, he, he, did, he did. It was the birth of Batista. He what? Said it was the birth of Batista. Oh, yeah. Deacon Batista, baby. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I guess I guess the APA would be waiting. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was talking about that uh, in, in his uh, induction speech. You and I were... Uh, we're there and when he was talking about when when he brought the uh, offering money to the back the APA would be waiting with their hands out that's right no. oh man the great reverend Yvonne man R.I.P. yeah man all right that was that was a that was a time <laughs> <laughs> a low point in Smackdown uh, um yeah my next one I said uh this is yeah. This is uh, one you didn't say. I said Simon Dean. <laughs> See, he was in my in my uh, honorable mentions there. I or dishonorable How do you not mentions. Put that on like the t- like they took Nova and turned him into that because it's Nova. <laughs> I just I don't know. Compared to the other ones on my list, I didn't think he was like you know such a big name guy that's like oh my gosh they ruined Nova. I mean, uh, okay, I'm, that's, I mean, it that's did fair, suck, but yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it didn't suck because it most definitely sucked big butt, but you know, he, it's, uh, there you go. People yeah, okay. sucked that's, big butt. That's yeah. That's a word you just used. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sucked big butt. <laughs> Next, I said, um, I said big daddy V. Oh yeah, out of viscera. Well, okay. I mean, was I, yeah. I mean, maybe even viscera. But I don't know. Well, like, okay. From able to viscera, from viscera to Big Daddy V. I yeah. I think one of the better repackagings was from Mabel into viscera. I thought that was a cool thing. But then from viscera to, and here's why I didn't put that one on my list. In my dishonorable mentions, I put viscera into the world's largest love machine. Because hmm. that sucked. But I thought World's Largest Love Machine into Big Daddy V, I thought was a good call. And I loved his theme song. Uh, I just did not like the fact that they're like, oh, you know, just just let your puppies hang out, pal. <laughs> put, 
put you on freaking suspenders like your little Kim or something. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna move on quickly before anything else offensive gets said. Rest in um, peace. Uh, next, I said Akeem, which mm, yeah, yeah. That, but it, I, I, I don't know. Like maybe we're being too hard on uh, on old Akeem there. I mean. The Jive Soul Bro, man. Shut up. Come on, he he shucked and jived, and uh, you know he had Slick as a manager. It, what he was he was uh, tag teaming with the Big Boss Man, and they, they were there was nothing racist about it. By the way, absolutely nothing. No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, moving on again. <laughs> Next, uh, this is one you didn't say either, uh, and you just mentioned racist, by the way. No, I said man. Saba Simba. <laughs> that was on my dishonorable mentions list. Yes, uh, I did bump it off my list because he, I don't know, was he a WWF guy? I, I think he was. Like, Yeah, and then he was in territories and came back, and then that's when they packaged him as sub. So yeah, technically this goes within yeah. you know, the main part of your your list yeah you said you wanted yeah yeah well it what what got me was like they were like well he found out he had african blood so he had to like no kidding he had african blood like what the hell like look at him like and it's not a racist thing i mean african-american right there it's in the name yeah i just that'd be like vince russo saying oh i found out i have italian blood in me bro like, <laughs> duh. Ah, man. Yeah, but you like you said, racist. Yeah. Oh, man. Next one. Uh, this is like a... I don't want to waste like four spots with this, so I just put it all in one. I oh, said man. the entire right to censor. Uh, you know what? I almost put that on... Wait. I almost put that on my list, but... It, the thing is, I don't know if you can consider uh, two of the people, Ivory and Goodfather. I don't know if that was technically repackaging or just a heel turn. Um, and then Stevie Richards and Bull Buchanan, sure. Uh, but it got over. So I was like, I don't know. That's why I didn't put IRS on my list. Because while dumb, it got over. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really going for over. I was thinking what I was thought was dumb. True. Yeah, it is. It really was dumb. Uh, st- I have a toy of Stephen Richards. Of course you do. Yeah, and you know I will be honest with you because I didn't watch ECW and I missed his stint in WCW. Uh, I had no idea who the hell he was when he showed up. I thought he was just a guy. You missed dancing Stevie Richards in WCW when you come out with the short, short, short shorts and <laughs> Joe's ass cheeks on. <laughs> man, he could have been the Booty Man 2.0. He kind of was. How did they, how did they miss that, man? Because Russo wasn't around yet. Missed opportunities, Michael Kels, bro. <laughs> Burn. Um, <laughs> next, I said. You might, I don't know how you feel about this one. I thought it was dumb and I hated it. I said Stardust. Uh, I thought it had potential, but most of I it. I hated it. I thought, I thought it, was, it was very unoriginal and they didn't even oh, try. Yeah. At first I was like, what the heck? Stardust? Where like, but then I found out that's what they used to call Dusty back in the day. And like on the side of his private jet, it said Stardust. Yeah, I did not know that. So it was a nod to his father. I thought it was kind of fun that one time, like right after David Bowie died, he came out with the Ziggy Stardust paint. I was like, yeah, that was- ah, nice. Fun, but uh, yeah, considering they took Cody freaking Rhodes and did that to him, yeah. It, uh, I was thinking the other day, by the way, because I, I like I've seen, I, I follow Gold Dust or Dustin Rhodes, whatever the hell, on uh, Twitter. And it's funny as hell that he's like this pickup truck driving, hunting, uh, ball cap wearing, tobacco chewing country boy from Texas. And he played a, 
and androgynous, I'll say, uh, very homosexual-like character on TV that painted his face and dressed in drag sometimes. And did it better than anybody. I know, it's so weird, but, I mean, hey, credit to him, man. He made it work. Next one you did have on your list. Uh, I said Kerwin White's. Oh yeah. Well, I didn't have it on my top ten, but it is. Well, I mean, my, it, I think I think you might have told me it was yeah last week. Yeah, I had it on my yeah. list last week, and That's yeah, right. it it is a dishonorable mention. That was one of the worst repackagings in the history of wrestling. You know, let's take this guy from this famous wrestling family on two continents, or not continents, but two countries, by the way. And, no, you know, I mean, they're famous in Japan, so you're kind of right. Okay, well, yeah. Well, then three countries. And, uh, yeah, screw him. Let's, um, make him a white guy. <laughs> oh, you felt like that, yeah. I see him in khaki shorts with blonde hair. Even though he's Mexican, he says, if it isn't white, it isn't right. Love it, pal. And he comes out to a Frank Sinatra ripoff. <laughs> Mm. Oh, man. Just the dumbest of dumb. Uh, okay. Here's my number one that you didn't have on your list at all. You, oh, I, you might have it on your you might have it on your honorable but uh, dishonorable mentions, but I just felt like this belongs on the list because, wow, man. Like, wow. Oh, uh, man. Number one, I said Brodus Clay. The Funkasaurus. <laughs> Somebody call and my mama. The reason I... The reason I'm so shocked is because when that first happened, I got like a hundred messages from you, like you knew you were pissed, dude. Because <laughs> I loved Brodus Clay. I know. That's why I'm like, why the hell is this on your list? I have a toy. That shocks of, me. I have a toy of Brodus Clay, well, by yeah, the way. Yeah, of course you do. Not not as the Funkasaurus, like pre Funkasaurus, uh, but yeah, I was just, I'm like, what the hell did they do to Brodus Clay? And they kept. Me and uh, a certain Brooklynite that you and I used to talk to, he was also pissed because both of us were big marks for him, and they kept playing it up, and they were playing, like, these awesome, like, vignettes for him, and or, like, hype videos, whatever, with his theme song and all this other stuff. And he's coming, he's, re- he's returning, he's coming back, and then he comes out dancing to somebody call my mama. Well, the giveaway for me was when Justin Roberts, like, uh, making his much anticipated debut on Raw from Planet Funk. And that's like, what? Yeah, when I heard that, I I was like, what? I was like, what the hell? There for a minute, I was hoping it was just a rib and he was going to, like, take off the jumpsuit and be like, man, screw this. And be like, this is what WWE wants from me, but I'm not going to do it, blah, blah, blah. No, he stuck with it. Just like, God dang it! Uh, but he has since, ladies and gentlemen, be re, uh, been repackaged as a Fox News analyst. So there's that. Real news analyst. <laughs> uh, but for those of you that think I'm ribbing you, no, I'm 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 serious. He's he's a Fox News analyst right now. I just I'm not joking. Uh, and uh, yeah, and he really is huge. <laughs> Oh, yes, he is. They, uh, He's on the Greg Gutfeld show uh, consistently, and they got him a big boy chair to sit in <laughs> because he's <laughs> he kept complaining weekly that he couldn't fit in the other chairs. Oh, man. Well, those uh, that was on my dishonorable mentions, but like I said, I was trying to go for, you know, repackagings not done of WWE guys. But... While we're mentioning them, you want to run down the rest of them I got here that we haven't made mentioned yet? Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Here we go, uh, Bro Disclay. No. I figured I'd slip that one in there since we were talking about him. Dang it. Wow. Uh, I said, here Here we go. I said, uh, Paul Birchall is the pirate. Wow, uh, two weeks in a row. Yep, he's in there. Giggity. Uh, I said Owen Hart into the blue blazer. Just what? I don't the know. Hell? I was thinking about that, but it was like, is that repackaging or re repackaging? Uh, the second one. But <laughs> yeah, uh, demolition smash into the Repo Man. Yep. That, that was uh, 
bumped it, but yes, awesome. I had it. Yeah. Uh, earthquake into Golga. I know their excuse. I of, mean, only yeah, you know, only because he got like smaller. Yeah, but he was still a big dude. They, he could have made it work, but no, it, ah, scrap it, screw it. It's, it's dumb. Get it out of here. No, uh, next, I said Fatu into make a difference. Fatu into the Sultan. Not just, working, pal. Yeah, just dumb all the way around. Uh, no, next, I said Jim Neidhart into who? <laughs> yeah, you got uh, that, uh, you, you got some work for uh, the big rhino. Uh, he's a he's a big bastard. Uh. That's my Stu Hart impression, by the way. My impression of an impression because I'm 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 impersonating Bruce Pritchard impersonating Stu Hart. <laughs> next, I said Albert. Uh, slash A Train slash Giant Bernard in Japan into Tenzai, and then Tenzai into Sweet Tea. All right, got back to the Funkasaurus already. <laughs> yep. Oh God, dang it! Uh, all right, and the last one I had on here that we have not mentioned, and I can't believe you haven't brought this up, was Kane into Corporate Kane. <laughs> Yeah, that was brutal. Back into There's Kane. There's one, by the way. There's one, by the way, that, like, because he went through more repackages than anybody in history, I think. I said Brian Adams, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, cr- he was uh, Crush in Demolition. Then he was the Kona Crush. <laughs> then he was the Japanese Sympathizer Crush. And then he was the Criminal Crush. And then he was the <laughs> DOA Crush. <laughs> yeah, Biker Crush. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then he was... Uh, and then he was Brian Adams. Then he was, you know, apparently weed smoker Brian Adams in Chronic. Uh, the the thing is, they never insinuated that Brian Adams and Brian Clark smoked weed, but they like their whole gimmick was weed. Their move was called High Time. <laughs> yeah. By the way, and I mentioned this to you before, I love the fact that Brian Adams' finishing move was called Cuts Like a Knife, making references to the singer Brian Adams. That I thought that was awesome. Oh, man, just stupid, stupid, bad stuff. Okay, well, this list actually went on longer than most of our lists do, but there were so many bad repackagings that we got into here. I I think we covered them all, though, or at least most of them. Uh, As always, if you didn't hear your favorites or your picks on the list, definitely comment down below and subscribe and like the video as well as tick the little bell so you can be notified whenever brand new content is posted on here we post at least two videos per week i'm trying to up that and definitely halloween week the week of halloween we will be posting more so definitely uh check that out greg and i uh are putting some stuff out there give you some exclusive halloween content for a, a very special week. So check that out. Anything else to add before we sign off here, Greg? Yeah, I'm sorry for bringing up all this misery. That's what we do. But thank you for joining me today, Greg. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And listen to the podcast. The links are in the description down below. Later. Later. Thanks for watching this YouTube exclusive video for the podcast Wrestling Society. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're picking up what we're throwing down. And of course, we always welcome feedback in the comments section down below. And if you want to keep up with the weekly podcast that drops every Wednesday, links to the show page are in the description down below, along with our social media handles and our associates pages. Come on and join the society.